On this episode of Not Rod, we make this happen. Brandon picked up two 1950 bullet nose Studebakers and he's going to turn one of them into a gasser and the other one is basically a parts car which is the one we are looking at right now and we're really anxious to see if maybe we can actually get this thing to fire off because it actually was the last one to run supposedly the guy was driving it around like 20 years ago or something like that so we're going to bar the engine over and just see if it spins and that's pretty much going to tell us if we're going to be able to make this thing run. I've never had an engine that would spin that I couldn't make run, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, this one looks way better than the other one, but still not very good. <laughs> yeah, nice to pull the spark plugs off and squirts down the cylinders. So, do we even know what voltage this is? I'm sure it's probably six. It's a six volt battery. Yeah. But I've run six volt systems on 12 volts before, so. Yeah. The only thing I'd be worried about is frying the coil or something. But Do we care? No, but I mean, fry it, we won't run it. Oh, that's a rotten ass spark plug. You got a pipe wrench? How big a one do you want? Whatever you got. Let's get serious here. <laughs> good thing this is made out of aluminum. I know. You ain't gonna be able to get it in there at the hood. Yeah, fans in the way. Maybe the smaller pipe wrench might be the way to do it then. It looks pretty rusty in this cylinder. So many hopes and dreams revolve around getting this car running, so. <laughs> Ooh, that's not a good sign that the engine is unlocked up. It looks like a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> the evidence is not going in our favor here. Maybe that filter housing sat there collecting water for like 10 years, but it was just big enough that it never overflowed into the engine. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that sucker's locked up solid. Yeah. Okay. Well, admit defeat? <laughs> I think so. Well, that was a complete fail. <laughs> so. The motor's completely locked up solid, uh, so this uh, this whole plant's completely off the rails. So maybe we will work on the Studebaker that we actually plan on running and being a gasser. <laughs> All right, so I picked this car because I've always liked them, and they make good gassers. They look cool. So, and it just so happens I found a couple on Craigslist, paid fourteen hundred bucks for the pair. This one had a pretty solid floor. The other one was more complete on the exterior, but was missing the floor. The bolts were pretty complete, so my plan for the car is to go drag racing, basically. And I want to build kind of an old school gasser. You know, it's not necessarily going to be period correct or anything, but straight axle front end, uh, slicks on the back, little tires up front. It's going to be an automatic. I got a 440 for it that I'm going to soup up a little bit, put in there. I'm basically just see what it does on the track. Uh, it's not really going to be all that street legal because I've only got slicks for it. Man, whoever thought that all the bolts would be breaking on a 70 year old car? That seemed like it did something. Yeah. There it goes. All right. Never been so happy over a broken ball. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is a sketchy setup. A swivel end wrench, double stacked with another wrench. <laughs> Well, it looks so stubby in the front now. 
Man, this is freaking antique archaeology right here. <laughs> this is archaeology for sure. What a find! Yeah! <laughs> oh, well, uh, where's this coffee I was promised? Oh, yeah. Let me go whip out a <laughs> pot of coffee. It was crazy on these. I was trying to pull the tires off, and I was like, man, these lug nuts are all rusted on there. Nope, they're reverse thread, or left-hand threads. Oh, really? Yeah. I was sitting there with the impact. <laughs> <laughs> Just Nothing. making them tighter. Yeah. <laughs> Just socking them down super hard. It's an easy way to take off a drive line. <laughs> I just really love the fact that we're replacing really oddball Studebaker stuff with really oddball Mopar stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Right about here we started to run into trouble. We had one transmission bolt that started to spin in the cross member. Blast away. Jeez, man. All right, well, how the f is the guy supposed to get that apart? Being that we aren't Studebaker experts, we began to assume that it was a stud that was pressed into the transmission. So rather than investigating further, we started thinking up cockamamie ways to try to rip the stud out of the transmission. So we started by jacking up on the transmission while using an impact gun on the bolt. I could probably keep jacking on it while you, uh... <laughs> Jackass. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course that didn't work, so then we resorted to the sawzall. But unfortunately we couldn't get the blade in far enough to cut the bolt. <laughs> Finally, we used a death wheel to cut the nut in half. <laughs> Then, after all of that, we discovered that the bolts actually just went all the way through the transmission and we could have just thrown a wrench on them the whole time. You'll probably think we faked that for dramatic effect, but the truth is we really are just that stupid. Well, you know that stuff must be good because it definitely smells of nasty chemicals. <laughs> yeah, it does. Don't need whatever that is. Right. Yeah, I feel good about that. I don't know about this back one. <laughs> okay. TV's out. One Studebaker six cylinder out. 440 in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like your alignment might be a little off. Oh, shit. 24 inches wide. About. Yikes. What? You mean a 440 Chrysler doesn't just fit right into a Studebaker that what? originally had a straight six? Crazy. Well, uh, have you actually put any beer in that new beer fridge of yours yet? No, not yet. I haven't even plugged it in. I just picked it up yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna work on this front end. Uh, the car was a coil spring front end, so I mean, it's got big coil buckets in the frame. Just gonna work on getting rid of those, kind of clean up the frame, give it more of that straight frame rail look. Just having coil buckets sitting there on the frame looks stupid. I've got one side that's almost done, and then move on to the other side. And my mounting holes for the fenders and everything will hopefully be in the same spot. So I was going to build a plate to cover that up, but it won't really match the way the frame was in here, but... No one will probably see the bottom side from me and you. <laughs> and all these guys. <laughs> Maybe we'll just cut the bottom part out. Yeah, we'll just... We'll just cut that out of it. Cut. Cut. <laughs>
support the new piece that we're going to weld in here. We've got a couple little plates and I've drilled holes into the frame on either side and into my piece on either side. So more or less it's just to kind of hold everything together a little stronger. I'm just going to fill in the holes like that. Just kind of stepping it up. Looks like it's pretty straight. Straight enough for the cars we built. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. You know. so that should be the center line of the back, though. Which means we need to go back two and seven eight. I don't know if that'll work. The springs are a little bit long for where the body mount on the frame is. So basically, we need to move the spring back into the body mount as far as we can is that way we get the the wheel as close to center in the wheel well as we can um, so in order to do that i gotta cut up these hangers and trim as much as we possibly can out of there just enough to clear the edge of the spring on the body mount and just run it like that <laughs> so this is what we got we'll see if it fits that's enough to weld i think <laughs> right when you like right. got to put an import right. hack in. Got to tack stuff in. Always. <laughs> I noticed that too. I'm gonna figure out how straight that is in the car. Not that it really matters. I mean, the first time you wood the thing with that 440 in there, this whole thing's gonna get twisted like a pretzel. So. And you might want to actually grind some more of that junk off the inside there. Ah, that's good. I can burn through. All right, burn through it. <laughs> burn it in. Yep, very much right there. And warranty's expired, so. <laughs> the warranty? No. Once, once, I, once I say what the measurement is, and I say it's good, the warranty is totally <laughs> expired. Of course, we're gonna get. I'm gonna put some tax on it. Looks like you're supposed to steer that far. No, <laughs> something's off here. <laughs> she is sitting on some tires. <laughs> All right, that thing is gas er. That's a sexy bitch. Oh snap. Oh, that's so cool. Isn't that cool? <laughs> uh, it looks like the wheels would be fine in the wheel wells. In the wheel wells. That's you loosely. Mean, you mean <laughs> underneath the wheel wells? Yeah. It's pretty sure it'll be fine underneath them. <laughs> Alright, so we started putting a straight axle underneath the Studebaker. As you can see, it's looking pretty damn cool. We're not sure. How far it's going to squat in the front with this guy here, it's pretty heavy. But we'll see, we got quite a bit of height there to work with, so I'm liking it. This is the kind of cool stuff I love that you really only get to see if you buy one of these cars. Right here you've got the blower motor, and instead of having it like a normal car would be, where it would blow through like this heater housing that goes up into the dash and all that stuff, instead on a Studebaker, they have this really weird getup where you've got this hose, that goes down underneath the firewall and then under the floor of the car to the heater core right here which is mounted under the seat in the floor of the car now maybe that's just to like keep your girlfriend warm or whatever i mean it might have been a selling point who knows i don't know but just crazy cool weird stuff that you really only see if you buy a car like this so i would say probably the next step before I finish welding any of the suspension stuff is to, to put the motor in because we want to see how it sits with the motor in it. And while we're at it, make motor mounts, tranny cross member, cut out the, the firewall to make it fit. Then we can see it with weight on it. Then we can move to the back. So here's the deal. Uh, the motor is kind of in place, but we're not exactly sure if this is where it's going to go.
We got the tunnel rim. We don't have the carburetors or the scoop. So I kind of would like the motor to be further back, but I don't want it in the windshield. So I kind of need the carburetors and the scoop so I can know how far back I can go. So just kind of for fun, we're going to go ahead and slap the tunnel rim on it right now. Uh, we won't know still exactly where the motor needs to go until we get the carburetors on and the rest of it, but why not, right? Well, of course, the first thing I had to do when I got the manifold was to see what it looked like. I don't blame you for that. I'd already planned on cutting this section out probably back to about where the hood goes. I just don't want to go somewhere where the scoop's going to be coming out in the window. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we're just going to have to find out. <laughs> Put a fender on. Put the fenders and see if the grill fits. And I've cut out the fender well since, so it'd be nice to see how they fit. <laughs> Let's scratch the paint, man. I know, I know. And then, the grill, back seat. That looks pretty cool. Obviously, these big gaping holes in the fenders are designed for the headers. Weight reductions. Yeah, basically for the headers and more rim to work on. I know really need inner fenders. So the header is kind of, this back one is going to have to kind of snake up and down. And then this one, and then they'll all tie together. And then eventually, when it's all together, it'll have the collector down in here. Something like that. Should look pretty sweet. Gonna be a lot of work, because obviously you can't buy headers for it. Just out of curiosity, I want to see if the hood fits on. I think I can... oh. Your light there. Oh dang! Just about busted that fluorescent. Yeah, I did. <laughs> that wouldn't have been good. No. Thinking Hillborn style scoop, something like that. It's uh, it's pretty tall. I mean, this is a little taller than it is factory. <laughs> but most guys like to run on these, the 660 center squirt carburetors. But they're like 700 800 dollars a piece oh geez yeah that's that's not gonna work that's like almost what you spent on two studebakers yeah yeah, yeah. that would be more than what i paid for the cars manifold's not really made for street driving so really <laughs> <laughs> didn't know that yeah Unfortunately, that's all we have time for on this episode, but I promise you on the next episode, there will be burnouts and more crazy car violence for your enjoyment. Changed. Whoops. It's fine. Ready? <laughs> I like your expression of just standing there waiting. <laughs> <laughs> right here, You've got the, what the fuck is this called? Blower motor. Right here you've got the blower motor. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you would call it big, but... Uh, got a small one. It's kind of medium size, you know.